We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Nathan, you were talking so much about how teams are going to be sampling it or um, intaking from the creator and autonomous and yada, yada, yada. So uh, behold, this is the match. Uh, this is New Hampshire uh, State Championship match 23, qualification match 23, featuring the one and only 11-115 gluten-free. So in my last match, I focused a lot on the collaboration aspect of this game. However, not all alliance compositions will allow for this. Oftentimes, we need to go at it alone, which is what Team Gluten-Free, Team 11115, did throughout their New Hampshire State Tournament. This is a qualification match, but I'm going to be candid here. They had to do this throughout the entire match. Like, they carried their alliance. They carried everything at this point. Like, so um, this is just a sample of what they got. This was the best camera angle. I'll talk about the camera a bit because uh, it was pretty ridiculous. But anyway, um, I digress. Um, so one of the biggest... Uh, so, um, uh, Tyler, if we could start this match, if we could play this match, that would be wonderful. All right, so as we can see over here, um, so uh, just a quick digression, 11115 will die in like the middle of this match, and I'm going to stop it there because nothing else happens. So as you can see over here, uh, Team uh, Gluten-Free does intake. Um, their, uh, their, uh, their, they do a double sample by intaking, and then they're scoring in the lander, right? So they're able to do this, and then they go back into that crater, right, to get two more. And they go get those two as well, with the, so basically for four cube autonomous. Um, so one of the coolest thing about this is, um, well, I mean, the thing is gluten-free's partner maintains themselves in that corner and then gluten-free takes care of everything else. So, um, I mean, that was a more effective use of that double sampling because their alliance partner couldn't really do anything. Um, and I think that that's the most, uh, valid use of that double sampling. Otherwise, I think you just lose points and you lose point totals that, you, that can happen. So, um, Tyler, if we could pause here, I just want to go a little bit more over what, uh, what happened. So one of the things that I really uh, that I notice is that as the season is progressing, right, as these t as teams are really getting um, getting the hang of their autonomous, getting the hang of their uh, well, getting the hang of their hang, <laughs> um, they're they're really starting to focus on the um, they're starting to focus on that cycle time aspect of it, right? And that's where a lot of teams are concentrating, and I feel like that's where a lot of teams are stagnating. So, because um, after a certain point, there's only so much you can really do with that cycle, with that, with your alliance, um, with, with with your cycle times, right? You can only get it so low. And I think that glue, and I think that so the next way to get over this is through the autonomous, because that's 30 seconds of un massively underutilized time. Um, autonomous is a is a point where. Um, is a, is a is a point of the match where you really aren't doing anything, and if you're as fast, if you get your robot as efficient and fast as something like gluten freeze, you're done with everything in just like 15 to 20 seconds. So you have these this amount of time that you're underutilizing, and I think um, doing that scoring in autonomous is the right way to go in terms of maximizing your point totals. So uh, we can continue this match now. Um, over here, we're going to be seeing gluten free just just like they're going to be going at it so, so hard. Okay. And one of the things that I really want to observe with gluten freeze, um, um, with gluten, with the way that gluten free does their scoring is that they maintain their field position almost, almost entirely in the sense that they have extrusions. They have a linear slide that goes into the crater. They have a linear slide that goes back out the crater, but their robot drivetrain itself isn't really moving back and forth. Right, and this is something I also noticed with team with Crack and Pinion in uh, in Wisconsin. Right, it's that they sort of stay in one place and they let their robot do the rest. I feel like this is a key. I'm what from everything I've noticed. Right, you have the top tier teams, which are like super top tier, which is basically Crack and Pinion and uh, Gluten Free at this point. I haven't seen anyone really, or or maybe maybe some of the other uh, high scoring teams as well. But I really think these guys are at the top of the pack, and these teams are really focusing on having almost no robot motion. As we move on, however, so, uh, oh, yeah, so this is where basically gluten-free gluten -free dies. But um, we basically, we, we, we've we seen what they can do. That's that. They just keep doing those cycles, and then they hang at the end of the match. So, yeah, if we can go back, we can just keep keep watching this um, while I talk. <laughs> so, um, basically, as you have less motion with that drivetrain, you all, you, I, I found that you have faster cycles, fa faster uh, mineral cycles. And um, that's what the top-tier teams are really, really focusing on. But the other thing I wanted to focus on was gluten freeze their um, their um, their their robot motion pathway, right? So if you notice, they extend their intake, bring their intake in, dump, 
and then they extend their intake before bringing their dumper down, right? That's something that a lot of teams don't really do. Most teams bring their dump out, then bring their dump back in, then bring their intake out. But uh, gluten-free is able to really optimize those cycles by understanding the limitations of the robot and understanding the capabilities of their extrusions moving separately and maximizing that usage. The last thing I want to talk about with this, uh, with the way that Crack Opinion is approaching the game is that if you notice, they they will they always have they have a very standard cycle, and even if their intake isn't able to uh, achieve that cycle successfully, they just go for it. So oftentimes, um, crack and um, sorry, gluten free. Oftentimes, they only get one mineral into their uh, into their hopper, but they go up there and they dump it instead of going back with their intake. And I've noticed that they they do this quite consistently, and it, I think that it allows them, especially because of their ability to um, have such a fast extrusion going out the back to uh, maximize those point totals because every uh, the more seconds you're in the lander or the more seconds you're in the crater it like the value of those minerals is exponentially decreases simply instead of if you don't simply just score them and continue so um that's what i have for this match so nathan what are your thoughts on this i just want to go back to that autonomous and check it out again that was the right, smoothest yeah. autonomous i've ever seen it almost yeah, looks they're... like someone's driving that robot right there <laughs> I totally agree. And uh, if you notice, I think they're using a glyph for that uh, from their intake. So that's pretty fun as well. But uh, yeah, I've, absolutely. I've seen a lot of teams use glyphs. Mm -hmm. It's pretty great. But I definitely, I, I definitely appreciate their the pathway that they're taking with that robot a lot. Like instead of having those very rigid turns, they're able to cut a lot of corners and again bring that uh, bring that time down, bring the bring the time that they take to do those eighty points uh, way down, so that they can effectively um, go for everything else. Yeah, no, it's just crazy. I saw that and I was, I was like, oh my God, just the swoop is just so beautiful. Um, one thing I can't quite tell, and maybe it's because uh, they died, is what those wheels are for. Are they for uh, gliding up the side of the lander when they hang? That's right. That's right. So they basically use those to um, be smooth while they come down and go back up in the beginning and end of the match. That makes sense. All right. So, um, uh, yeah, so like the way that uh, the way that I basically see this uh, and one thing that I do want to note it note is that um, Gluten free I think they, their maximum capability of mi minerals from the lander is six not four So they were actually able to do another cycle in another match and uh, they that was um, that was honestly pretty effective um, with the way that they are able to with the way that they're able to to run basically All right, so um, do we want to uh, oh yeah, so we have a question. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. We have a question from K West. Um, why are they using the live scoring GUI, but the rest are using the paper score sheets? Yeah. So that's one thing I noticed as well. I believe it didn't. It stopped working, or they weren't able to use it well because I noticed in earlier matches and in later matches, like when we get to finals, they do live score. So I think that this section, like the like this qualification match or this set of matches, uh, had an issue um, with the score live scoring system, and they had to revert, but they didn't revert the GUI. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.